Hey y'all, hi. Today I am just filming a simple, straightforward swatch video of the Merit Lipstick. The full official title of the product is the Merit Signature Lip Lightweight Lipstick. I wanted to make this video because I really like this product. I feel like it's one of the best lipsticks I've ever tried. Definitely the best lipstick release of the year so far in my opinion. And because of that, because I've said that on camera, I've gotten a lot of questions in my comments and my DMs about the formula and the colors. So I actually reached out to Merit and asked if they would send the full range of these lipsticks, send all of the colors, so that I could make this video. So the video isn't sponsored, but they sent the lipsticks to me for this use. So I'm going to give really good close-up swatches to hopefully answer every question you might have, along with color comparison swatches for each individual color to help you understand the colors better. And if you stumbled across this video because you're trying to decide which color of this lipstick to buy or if any of the colors will suit you or if the formula will suit you. If the video helps you decide and you decide to get a lipstick, then I hope you'll click through one of the links in my description box before you make the purchase. That will help support my channel and it also will give me data to show Merit that this video is a useful guide, which will make it more likely that I'll have the opportunity to do work like this in the future. I also hope you will subscribe if you aren't subscribed. I make videos grounded in discernment and self-awareness in the beauty space. I try to celebrate the love of beauty without promoting mindless spending. Sometimes that means zooming in really close on a product to provide as much information as possible, and that's what we are going to do today. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, these are the colors. Tiger, 1990, Slip, Baby, Millennial, Fashion, Lavenue, and Cabo. I have had Tiger and 1990 for a long time. I've had these two since the product released. I have been playing around with Baby and Slip and wearing them a little bit since the rest of the colors arrived. And these four, Millennial, Fashion, Lavenue, and Cabo, I actually haven't even gotten the chance to wear yet. But I am going to swatch them all out for you now on my arms. You can see all of the colors together. Then I'll go through color by color and discuss each color up close and give a comparison swatch with another lipstick for each color. So here are all of the colors 
laid out. And I'm actually hoping that the thing that I really love about this formula, the thing that impresses me the most, is something that you can see in the swatches, which is a particular balance of pigment and opacity. There are so many products on the market that are trying to be like hybrid lip treatment lipsticks, and I feel like they fall short because they're not sturdy enough. They're not lipsticky enough. These are full-fledged lipsticks, but they don't have an overwhelming amount of pigment, like an amount of pigment in it that makes them hard to control or that makes them drying, makes them get on your teeth, makes them migrate. To me, they have the sturdiness and dependability of real lipstick, but the natural wearability of something that's a little bit of a hybrid, something that's kind of like a tinted chapstick. So I end up wearing them rubbed into my lips and blocked down and I will buff out these swatches right now so you can kind of see what the colors end up looking like on the lips the way that I wear them. So hopefully you'll be able to see how well the pigment has held its own even when I've buffed them out. And what you might not be able to see but what I can feel is that they just feel really, really, really sturdy. These swatches feel like it's going to take a little bit of work for me to clean them up. I'm going to have to use the makeup remover, a little bit of soap and water, and that that quality of sturdiness, kind of stick to means that they end up lasting even in this sheared out, supernatural, kind of flushed looking state. They end up lasting on my lips for a lot longer than other products that deliver this kind of look. It's this quality, the fact that I can shear them out and still feel like I'm really wearing a lipstick, but not feel like I'm wearing too much makeup on my lips and trust them to last. It's this quality that has caused me to declare that this is the best lipstick formula of the year. And, of course, the colors are really beautiful. We'll get into each one of them in detail in a minute. And it has to be said that the packaging is really amazing, too. It's got this kind of, like, 1970s vibe, and I live for that. So here's Tiger up close. This is Merit Tiger right here. And I've swatched it next to another lipstick that I own that I really like, which is the YSL Slim Glow Matte Lipstick in the shade 214, Illicit Orange. And this is an interesting comparison because I think of Illicit Orange as a really wearable, soft kind of brick nude. And I feel like Tiger is even more that. It's hard to tell seeing them side by side like this, but Tiger, at least on me, it really reads as a red, but it's a really wearable red. I think maybe the most wearable red that I've ever had, like the very definition of a brick nude. I love wearing it because I feel like it lights up my face the way that a red lipstick does, but it doesn't kind of stylize my face or make my lips look thinner or make me look more severe in the way that red lipstick sometimes can. Of all of these lipsticks, surprisingly, the ones that I've had and I've been wearing, this one, Tiger, is the one that I've worn the most. So I feel like Illicit Orange really shows us how red this isn't. To shed even more light on how red Tiger can be, I'm going to put a 1990 right next to it because I feel like Illicit Orange really shows this as a brown, but 1990 is a true brown. So here's 1990, and you can now see what I'm talking about when I say that Tiger really is a red, especially if we cover up Illicit Orange. Right, there we have a brown lipstick and a red lipstick. And as I said in the beginning, these are the two that I've had for months, so they're my two most worn Merit lipsticks, and that's how I've thought of them. I've thought of them as my Merit Brown and my Merit Red. 1990 from Merit is a standout for me because, again, of the balance of undertones. So put it next to Mink, which is a red Revlon lipstick. As you can see, it's a pretty good comp, right? Like a pretty good drugstore dupe. But Mink reads on me just a little bit rosier. It's a little bit more of like a mauve, a brownish mauve. 1990 holds its own as a brown. It's really, truly neutral. And in that way, it stands apart from every other lipstick that's very close to this shade that I've ever had. And I've had a number of them because this is my favorite color, right? I really love brown makeup. I 
buffed them out a little bit so that you can hopefully see what I'm talking about, how neutral 1990 stays. And with mink, when I buffed it out, you can kind of see those chroma pigments coming through, those color pigments, like a, a little bit of orange is kind of coming out of it, a little bit more pink coming out of it. I feel like 1990 is just a touch more neutral and maybe a touch less saturated. It's more of a desaturated color, and that is probably one of the reasons that I'm getting along with it so well. All right, let's take a close look at this shade right here, which is Merit Slip. I feel like there's uh, a lot to be said here. First of all, look at it next to 1990. I think in some of the product photos online or the swatches in the listings, 1990 looks maybe intimidatingly dark for some people. Like if you're pale like me, it looks like it might be really vampy. But when you see them swatched out side by side, you see that it's actually just an issue of undertone, right? This is a much more neutral, actual 90s brown. This on me with my kind of olive undertone, it sort of leans orange. I think of this as a much, much warmer nude. And that's why I put it next to Maybelline Raw Chocolate, because even though raw chocolate is uh, a matte and it's super saturated, they basically have the same undertone, that warm kind of rusty tone. If you struggle with lipsticks always going orange on you and you're looking for something neutral like this, I would definitely go with 1990. It can be worn sheer out, it can be worn as a much more natural color than maybe you would think, and it's going to stay neutral on you, whereas slip is going to go orange. That's what happens to me. But if you tend to get along better with very warm, almost orange leaning neutrals, then you're going to get along well with slip. So again, here we have Tiger 1990 and Slip from Merit, and the comps are YSL Illicit Orange, Revlon Mink Buffed Out out there and Maybelline raw chocolate. Okay, here we have a close look at Merit Baby. And since this lipstick has arrived in my life, I found myself reaching for it to finish looks in a subtle way. So it gives me that slight polish. It can actually be sheared out much, much more than what this swatch is currently showing and still hold its own, kind of like that. So I've ended up applying it like that just to, you know, brighten up my lips a little bit to help provide some balance when I have on like strong eye looks or strong blush looks. I've been testing a lot of eyeshadow lately, so I've had full eye looks on my eyes almost every day, and I found that this Merit lipstick makes a really good complement to those. This is a pink. It's Merit's mauve, but again, I find it impressively neutral. It doesn't lean pinker than it looks in the tube on me, which a lot of pinks tend to do. It also doesn't go too orange or warm on me, which a lot of mauves tend to do. And I put it here next to Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn, kind of to make that point. I really like Velvet Fawn, but I do find that it gets that kind of sunsetty orange undertone on me because those orange pigments are popping against the green in my skin. At first glance, these lipsticks actually look really similar to each other, but for some reason on me, they end up wearing really differently. And I thought putting them side by side would be a good demonstration of the neutrality of Baby from Merit. Okay, this is Millennial from Merit, and now we're getting into the ones that I haven't worn, so I won't be able to give you as much information about like what kind of looks I've been wearing them with, but I will be able to swatch them next to other lipsticks so that you can learn more about the undertones. So I put Millennial from Merit next to Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief, which is actually, that's the luxuriously lucent formula from Lisa Eldridge, probably the thing that's the closest formula-wise to the Merit lipsticks, but it's much slidier and shiny 
shinier than the Merit lipsticks. And you can see that just like the undertone difference in Baby and Velvet Fawn, there's more of that sunsetty warmth, that kind of peach pigment mixed into the Lisa Eldridge. The, both of these Lisa Eldridge lipsticks just look like they have more peach in them than their Merit counterparts. That's how they both look buffed out. So again, we have Merit Baby, Merit Millennial, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn, and Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief. Okay, this is Fashion from Merit, and this is the closest thing I have. I don't have very many lipsticks this color. It is the bottom left-hand shade, this shade right here, in Les Quatre Rouges La Poudre, Poudre? this rouge powder lip palette. And there is Merit L'Avenue, which I am really excited to wear now that I see this watch up close. I swatched it next to Revlon Rum Raisin, which is actually a lipstick that I really love wearing. I feel like it looks a little bit more, it has more white base mixed into it than the Merit lipstick, but I know that buffing this out will make it less intense, less vampy than maybe I had worried that it would be. If you've ever owned Rum Raisin, then that gives you a really good sense, I think, of how Merit L'Avenue will wear on you. So again, here we have Fashion L'Avenue. Those are the Merit lipsticks. The bottom left-hand shade from the Rouge Lip Powder Quad, Revlon Rum Raisin. And finally, wow, how exciting. This is Merit Cabo. This is also one I haven't had the chance to wear yet, but I'm really excited to wear it. Here it is next to Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon, which is my all-time favorite red. And it does look like just a slightly less intense version, right? It is maybe a little bit brighter, like a little more orange, a little bit le less of that rust, but they're very similar in undertone. I mean, I think if I told you that this was just like a slightly buffed out swatch of Velvet Dragon. You might be skeptical, but you also might believe me. I think the fact that it's been so relatively easy for me to find comps for most of these colors shows one of the other reasons that I like this lipstick so much, which is that I just think that for an edited range, for just having eight colors, they made really good choices. You know, if you're going to have one really bright, bold red, then this exact rusty orange red is what I would choose, right? There's just someone making decisions over at Merit about color, about tone and undertone, whose thinking is really aligned with my thinking about color and my preferences. And this really just kind of puts the butter on the spinach of that concept, in my opinion. So here are the Merit lipsticks with their, their comps up here, the, the color comparisons. I know you can't really tell much from this because, you know, the lipsticks all look the same from the front like this. But I will obviously link all of these down below so you can go to the description box if you want to follow up on any of what you just saw in those close-up comparison swatches. And that's it. I hope that this was fun to watch, even if you're not in the market for lipsticks or if you think that these aren't the colors for you or that this is isn't the formula for you. If that's the case, I hope that this video helped you figure that out. I think one of the reasons that it can be good to do a deep dive on a product like this is that it can actually help you come up with a reason not to buy the thing or help dispel some of the fantasy that you might have built up for yourself around the thing. And of course, if you had already decided to buy one of these lipsticks and you're having a hard time figuring out exactly what undertone might suit you best, exactly what the quality of the formula is like or trying to figure out how you might wear it. I hope that this video has helped you get some clarity on those questions. Don't forget to subscribe before you go if that is something that you wish to do and you haven't done it already. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.